Greetings friend, I will show you how Cracking the Cryptic solved this tricky Sudoku using naked triples. See if you can solve the cells where Mark Goodliff got stuck during my pause the video moments. And with that, it's solving time. First thing Mark did is he added some eights across the top. Normally in a three by three block, you would add corner mark cells and there's only two possibilities for can remaining. That's called Snyder notation. However, Mark added all three, which I wouldn't recommend because normally with Snyder, if you solve one, you can solve the other one right away. But with three, you can't. This is normally reserved for variant Stoku solving. He does the same thing with the sixes down in block eight. And then he's going on with some more Snyder marks here. So he does uh, twos in block eight. He does some eights in, excuse me, some twos in block four. And he does some fives up here in block two, some sixes in block three, some ones in block six. And then from there, he actually spots a pointing pair. He notices that this six cuts right across row five. So it leaves two possibilities for a six in these two spots. And since they're in the same column and within the block, they're a pointing pair. A six can't be anywhere else along column five, otherwise you wouldn't be able to put a six here in block five. And so he marks the six and removes that extra mark. He does some more marks with the fives here in block seven, and he sees some nines up there in block one. And he says at this point, he couldn't find anything to solve. And this will make a puzzle feel really hard if you go through the normal cross hatching and you don't see anything. And so he's got to step his game up a little bit. He's going to start filling out some cells where there's only two possibilities remaining. So the first one he looks at is right here in row three, column four. He says, hey, that's only a three or a six. And he's actually onto something right here. This is the next uh, strategy you need to be focusing on, and it starts with this cell right here. He does some more Steiner marks. He puts some eights in block nine. He puts some eights in block eight because these are now a pointing pair. So there's only two possibilities for the eight right there. And then he looks and sees that he can put a 4-7 in this cell. After that, he goes up here and notices it's have four cells up here, and I got three more there. This is only two possibilities. And this is the tough part. There's really, other than block five, there's no other spots that have at least five cells filled in. So it's really hard to find that center of gravity of where you need to be focusing on. But this does lead him to that first strategy he needs. He's like, oh, I see something here. I notice the three six here, I notice the three five there, and since we have four digits, the one four eight nine here, and the two seven eight here, that's gonna limit what goes in that cell. It's a three, five, or six, and this creates a naked triple because the three, five, and six are limited to those three cells. And what it means is that three, five, and six cannot be anywhere else along row three. This brings us up to our first pause the video moment. Pause the video and see if you can solve a cell using the naked triple. Well, I give you a few seconds. Congratulations if you spot it. You are sharp, and Mark actually spotted it too. Those of you who just want to enjoy the show, since a three, five, and six have to be in the purple cells, this cell can no longer be a five, and so you can solve for the five right there. And so Mark does see that, and he solves for the five, removing that extra mark from the eight and block two there okay after doing that he marks the remaining cells in row three and he puts a one nine right there and so this is a naked pair to go along with the three five six naked triple in row three click on the pin comment below to learn more about naked triples and pairs all right with this five and this five there's only two possibilities for five in block three so he marks that with the Snyder marks on the three, five, and six. Then he does some more Snyder marks. He does some twos up there in block three. He does some ones in block two. And then he looks for more restrictions. He's kind of focusing on column two and row four, and he notices a six and the seven. So he's kind of on to something here too. There is something afoot there. Uh, and he thinks, okay, maybe I found another naked triple, right? And so he goes up to row two, column two, puts a four, six, seven there. There's really nothing there. He can't see a triple made from it. So he can't see a four, six, seven restricted anywhere else in that column. And so then he starts and comes down here into 
row five because the restrictions in block five puts a four right there puts a four seven eight right there doesn't see a triple again but he comes over here to row five column one puts a one seven eight and then he does see it he notices that you got this two three six eight here you got this four five there six candidates all looking at these two cells that makes it a one seven nine and so he created another naked triple with the one seven nine and i'll highlight that for you and this is why i love handmade classics you have this cool naked triple across row three you got this naked triple in column one and these are the only way to get and make any progress in the puzzle you got to find both of them and now we're going to move on to find some more naked pairs and hidden pairs it's awesome how Topi set this puzzle up. Subscribe to Smart Hobbies if you love handmade classics like this. All right, let's look now with this 179. There's only one possibility left here because the 1 and 7 cannot be in this cell. It has to be in the purple. So we can solve that for an 8. We can remove our colors. And then with this 8, now I can focus across row 5. It's like Mark knew that he could start solving. So he did the 4 here and the 7 there to uh, fill in those places where he'd already put some marks. And then that leaves us with just a six, eight right here. And he misses an opportunity. I'll get back to that. Uh, he does fill out the rest of row five with this one, two, five. And then looks in column one and says, I got this one, seven, nine. I got the two, four, five, eight. There's only a three, six remaining. So he marks the three, six. Uh, Notice the sevens are limited to block seven, so he makes those marks, and that actually makes him a claiming pair. So sevens can't be in any of these spots anymore. That is the significance of that. Then he's doing some more marks. He can't really see where to go next. So he looks up here in block three and puts a three seven, and then he puts a three seven eight here in row four, column eight. And this is common for Mark. You know, when he's, he can't see something easy with the cross hatching, he'll start doing these buy value sells to BVCs because that usually will link you to a more advanced strategy. There really isn't a more advanced strategy. It's just a lot of these pairs and triples that you just have to find and it, it makes it a fun challenge in this puzzle. And then in row four, he sees something really cool here, a naked quad. He notices that you got a three six here, a six seven there, a six eight there, and a three seven eight there. So the three six seven eight, those four digits are limited to those four cells that is a naked quad i'll put that in green awesome and the inverse of that would be a hidden pair of a two four in these two cells and so he puts the two four right there and then he doesn't really see where to go next so then he looks and he thinks there's some restrictions down here so he puts a one eight nine in row seven column six and now it sees us up to our next pause the video moment Pause the video, see if you can solve a cell here in block eight. Well, I give you a few seconds. Congratulations if you spotted it. You also know that naked pairs can act as pointing pairs. This six, eight naked pair is also a pointing pair. You can remove the eight from here and solve this cell for an eight. Mark didn't see that, he missed it. I do cover naked pairs as pointing pairs in my double cell solving combos tutorial. All right, let's get back to the solve here. He didn't see that just yet, but he did see is that a four can only be in one spot in block six. It can only be right there because of this four and these two fours. So he solves for four there, which disambiguates the two four in row four. And then he cleans up uh, the spots there with the two. After that, he does some twos in block six because now they're restricted to block six. Put some fours in block nine. And then he puts a three, five, seven in row eight, column seven. When you see him putting in three or four marks into a cell, it means he's really not sure where to go next. Actually takes him several minutes and then he finally spots this six, eight naked pair acting as the pointing pair. And so he solves that eight right there, which gives us some more solves because of this eight, you can remove the Snyder from that cell and solve this cell for an eight. After solving that eight, he now has to find a hidden pair and he does find it. If you notice, 
you have this 2, 4 right here, can't be in these two cells. They can't be in these two cells, so they're limited to those two cells. Whenever two candidates are limited to the same two cells, even though there's other possibilities there, this is called a hidden pair, and it limits those candidates to those two cells. So the 2, 4 have to be in these cells. Mark sees that, and he marks the 2, 4. And a hidden pair also acts like a pointing pair. So that means the 2 and 4 cannot be anywhere else along row 2. So this can no longer contain a 4, and that can no longer contain a 2. So he makes that mark first, creating a nice naked pair in column 2, which you have to find to make progress in this puzzle. And then he's able to go over here and solve this 2 in block 3, which displaces a Snyder 6, which displaces that Snyder 5. And then he's able to finish the 3 there in row 3. So a lot, a lot of great solving there, but we are not done yet. Okay, after doing all that, he marks and finishes his 3-7 up here in block 3. After doing that, he marks this cell as a 6-9. Then he looks over and finishes row 2 and says, okay, this has got to be a 3-7-9. Not really much you can do with it just yet. But then he can see um, that with this 1-5, there's actually another place to put a 1-5 in block 4. And this acts as a naked pair to create some restriction in block four. He's using the six, seven naked pair to go. There's only a one, four, and five left in column two. So he does the one, four up there. And then he notices, hey, I can put this three, seven down here. And he sees a nice pointing pair. You've got to find this to make more progress. All right, so our next positive video moment, find the pointing pair that's going to give us some solves in block five. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Congratulations, you're getting good at spying these, even though they're not marked with Snyder notation. The sixes are limited, these two spots in block four, which means a six cannot be anywhere else along this row. Mark spotted that, and he was able to solve that cell for an eight, and solve this cell for a six. Then he cleans up, gets rid of that eight right there, and then he looks down column four and goes, okay, I got a four, six here, two, four there. He misses the opportunity to see that this is a two, four naked pair. He could solve the six right away, but he gets back to it pretty quickly. He then marks some threes here in block eight. He puts a one, three, nine there, goes, okay, there's some restrictions going on there. And now he finally sees, okay, since this is a one, three, nine, that blocks out that six and I can solve for the six right there. Okay, after solving for the six, uh, he then comes back up here and goes, okay, that's got to be a 1-6 because this is the 6s are limited in these two spots. After doing that 1-6, he comes over here and sees that this 2 actually displaces that 5. So he can solve that for a 5, which is going to allow him to solve for the 1 and the 2 in row 5. After solving all that, he can solve for the 1 in block 6. And then he's able to... Take this one and solve for the five right there. And that's going to help him out a little bit by displacing the Snyder five down here and solve for a five in block seven. All right. After that, he fills in the one four here. Excuse me, the one should be a one four in block seven. And then after doing that, he looks and goes, this has to be a four, seven, nine. Okay. Now, where can we go next? Well, we just solved the five. And so we're looking to where we can solve 5 here in block 9. Well, with this 5 and these two 5s, you can solve for a 5 right here, which displaces that Snyder 8. After displacing the Snyder 8, you can actually see with these two 9s, you can solve for a 9 right there. And so Mark does. And then that allows us to look up here and see with this 3, 7 naked pair, the only candidate left is an 8. So he solves for the 8. In row six, column eight, and then he puts a three, seven in row six, column nine. Comes on down, goes, okay, there's a three, four, seven down here. Doesn't get any solves. Like, eh, I gotta find something a little bit better there. And he does because he comes back over and says, oh, I got this one and nine here. That now has to be a three. So he's able to solve for the three, which allows him to solve for the seven, solve for the four, and solve for the three in the, the corner right there, awesome. And then he solves for a seven right there in 
the three to finish up block six. After solving those, he solves for the seven and three up here in block three. After doing that, he's getting really close, getting really excited, thinks he might have cracked this puzzle. All right, but did he? We'll see. He notices I got seven digits filled in here, so I've got to be able to solve these two cells, and he's right. He can solve for the six there and the seven there, which then allows him to solve, because of the six here, he allows him to solve for the three up there in the corner as well. And it's not showing us that. Hopefully, it'll show up for you when you do the solving. Okay, after doing that, we can actually solve here in block one. So that's got to be your six. And then we can solve for uh, the nine across row two. Solve for a one and the six there in block two. Then we can come back over here into block one, solve for the four, the one, and the nine, and the seven. Okay, work our way down here into block four, solve for the three right there, getting close. Notices this is can't be nine, you know, right there. So we can get rid of the one seven there, make a solve for the four right there, and solve for the two. We're going to do uh, some more solving down here in block eight, knowing that this has to be the one because it can't be a three or the nine. And he looks right here, he solves all these three cells at the same time, which I thought was pretty impressive. He's like, Yeah, that's a seven, four, and that's a nine right there, which is going to allow us to disambiguate the one seven over here. And then you have these last two digits, which is a two and a four. Watch this next video to see how Mark handled a more vicious Sudoku than this one. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching.